Hello everyone, welcome back. In my previous vlog, we discussed about landing distance calculation, which a pilot does before commencing his final descent into his destination, just to ensure that the aircraft lands and stops within the available length of the runway. These numbers are valid only if the aircraft lands within the touchdown zone of the runway. In this vlog, we'll discuss about this touchdown zone. So what is the touchdown zone? How does a pilot sitting inside the cockpit know that he has landed within the touchdown zone? How would a pilot miss this touchdown zone? And what are his actions just in case if he misses the touchdown zone? You just try to analyze these situation with some clips relating to real-time scenarios. You can follow me on X, Facebook, Instagram. Without wasting any further time, let's get started. Thank you. Touchdown zone is that part of the runway which is one third of the length of the runway or first 3000 feet, whichever is less. Now let's understand this with real time figures landing it to John F. Kennedy with a landing weight of about 250 tons landing on runway 13 right. But this is how my screen actually looks in the cockpit and as per the calculations, landing distance required is 10,200 feet and landing distance available is 12,400 feet. Also, you can see a tab on the right side which says factored and unfactored landing distance and the landing distance calculation that you see on the screen is factored landing distance. As I walk you through this vlog, we'll discuss more about factored and unfactored landing distance. And to know what runway designator 13 right actually means, my runway surface condition which could be wet, dry, damp and contaminated, my landing speeds, my thrust reversal setting and my brake settings. You can refer to my previous log, the link of which is given in the description. This is how a typical runway looks and the secret about the touchdown zone lies with those white markings on the runway. The blast pad is an area right behind the beginning of the runway where the aircrafts line up, open full power and get ready for takeoff. This area must always be clear of men and material as the intense effect of the jet blast coming out of the engines could be felt even at a distance of 400 feet. Moving forward, we have the runway threshold marking which actually marks the beginning of the runway. In certain cases, these threshold markings could be displaced which actually means the part of the runway that is behind these threshold markings are unusable for landing but could be used for takeoff. The edge marking defines the lateral confines of the runway and the center line markings defines the center line of the runway which becomes quite significant during night operations. The aiming point markers are those where the pilot is supposed to touch down exactly and they are at a distance of 1000 feet from the runway threshold and you can also see subsequent markers at the distance of 500 feet. These are the markers which define the touchdown zone and they are known as touchdown zone markers. Starting from the threshold, you can see 6 markers at the distance of 500 feet each that makes it 3000 feet in total. Coming back to our definition of touchdown zone, it is one third of the total length of the runway or first 3000 feet, whichever is lesser. As the pilot approaches the runway intending to land at the aiming point marker, he starts counting his touchdown zone markers with which he knows exactly where he has touched on. In general, the aircraft approaches the runway at an angle of 3 degrees crossing the threshold by about 50 feet, thereby touching down at the aiming point markers which is about 1000 feet from the threshold. As the aircraft glides through this 3 degree angle, the rate of descent is typically around 13 feet per second and when the aircraft touches down, it is around 5 feet per second. 
assuming this runway to be about 12,000 feet long as per the definition of the touchdown zone which is about 3,000 feet from the beginning of the runway. You can see there's a margin of about 1,000 feet ahead of the touchdown point and 2,000 feet beyond the touchdown point. Under ideal conditions, the aircraft should be technically touching down at the aiming point marker which is not always possible. It could be ahead of this or it could be beyond this. There could be several practical reasons why the aircraft hasn't touched down exactly at the aiming point marker. And hence, to offset the situation, a margin of 15% has been added to the actual landing distance which becomes your factored landing distance. So, unfactored landing distance would be the actual landing distance just in case if the aircraft touches down exactly at the aiming point marker which is not always possible. An addition of 15% to this distance makes it factored landing distance which is more practical. There are quite a few reasons why the aircraft is not able to make it exactly to the touchdown point like the runway perspective, landing techniques and the most important being the weather which includes updrafts and downdrafts. Updraft generally causes the aircraft to touch down beyond the aiming point markers and downdraft generally causes the aircraft to touch down ahead of the aiming point markers. Having understood the concepts of touchdown zone, let me talk you through this landing in which we will be counting the markers on the runway so that you will get a brief idea as where the aircraft has touched down. Aircraft is on the correct flight path. You can see the blast pad, a runway threshold, runway designator, crossing threshold at 50 feet, first marker at 500 feet, aiming point marker, landed 1500 feet, 2000 feet, 2500 feet, 3000 feet. For night operations, certain runways have touchdown zone lighting extending all the way up to 3000 feet but they become quite significant only in case of low visibility operations such as thick fog, heavy snow. On a clear night, you can easily identify these markings without any lightings. This is a typical case of severe downdraft where the aircraft comes with the wings rocking, quite unusual, crosses the threshold and there she bangs. Bounces back, lands for the second time, realizes that she's not going to make it, continues with the takeoff and this particular maneuver is known as go round. This is a typical case of updraft where the aircraft comes in nice and easy, slightly rocking her wings. 500 foot marker, a miss is the 1000 foot marker, 1500, 2000, 2500 and makes it around 2700. Realizes that she's not going to make it, continues with the takeoff. This particular clip shows you how desperate the pilot is to land. Completely unstable, 500 foot marker, way too high on the 1000 foot marker, 1500, 2000, 2500, 3000 pushes the nose down to land and his nose gear touches first, which is not acceptable. And the aircraft is all over the place. This is a very bad example. Technically, he should have gone around, come in for the second approach. So that's all for today, guys. I hope my language was simple and non-technical and you all learned something new. I would appreciate all your comments and you can also follow me on X, Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.